Hey guys, so I'm just about to uh, take this print out of the printer. It's just finished. Uh, I kind of let it drip dry a little bit. And uh, I'm just gonna, while I'm doing this, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my experience so far with this printer and, uh, and how it applies specifically to the jewelry trade. So, um, so far I've been very impressed. Um, I mean, I, I haven't really done a whole lot yet with the casting stuff. So the green, you can see this is in blue. Um, the casting stuff is about five times the cost. So I'm waiting until I've figured things out. This one was actually a test where I wanted to see if I could print um, directly on the bed. I only have minimal supports out here around the uh, these little key ring things. Um, it actually looks really good. There's a, oh, this looks great. So there's no supports on this. This is just a flat on flat against the bed. And um, I wanted to see if it would work and it seems to have. So I'm just gonna stick this onto the, into the cleaner. And we'll start that. In the meantime, uh, I'm gonna take this and uh, put it back into the bottle. And I'm gonna fill it up with green because I've actually got a print ready to go that, um, that, that I'll show you shortly, uh, that I'm very confident with. This is all gonna be cast in silver and I, I think it'll work fine. All right, <clears throat> so I just washed the tank. Uh, with this tank, you do not um, actually wash it with the isopropyl, which is in here. Uh, if you do, it can either mess up the film or it'll just outright contaminate your resin, and neither one of those you want. I'm not sure which one, but uh, both are good enough reasons not to. So I'm just gonna put this aside for a second. You gotta be very careful with the tanks because of the uh, FEP foil on the bottom. Um, you got to make sure they're flat. They don't get stretched specifically. Uh, if you stretch it and you end up with like a little, um, it just looks like a little dent and it, it doesn't take much. So anyway, we're going to set that aside, reveal this. That looks great. See, it's very dense. Like I wanted to fill this up as best I could. Um, yeah, that looks amazing. Everything's squeaky. Everything's exactly where I want it. Some of these little letters in the past when I went to go and uh, print these, the because they were relatively high, I think they're about two millimeters off the base, the, the center part would droop. So it just looked wrong in general. Um, but anyway, so let's, uh, let's scrape this off. And then we'll put this into cure. So like I said, this was a flat on flat. So the sides of these are just meant to be flat and they shouldn't uh, be, they, they should just come out normal. Uh, I'll have to cut off the rest of these supports. You see some of them are pretty well fused, but uh, nothing major, nothing I can't do with like a little bit of knife work. Anyway, put that in upside down, I think to start. Uh, I realized that I was actually using this tool incorrectly. So when it came, here, let me show you. So when it came, it said start drying. Uh, it's actually, oops. Settings, advanced, run mode. So there's curing and drying, drying, and curing. So the drying does not mean that it's doing both of these things. Drying 
means that out of here, there's uh, it's, it's a heater. Basically, it's just pumping hot air in here and blowing away or drying off the isopropyl. And it kind of comes up around these great things. And then after it's done drying, it does the curing separately, which is when it turns on these UV lights that are up in here and on the sides. And that's blasting it with UV light and curing the, the resin itself. So anyway, let's get that started. And then you close the lid. So it tells you the temperature that's inside and that'll actually get up to whatever I set it actually. I don't know what the maximum is, but I currently have it set to like 30 degrees Celsius. So pretty toasty. But uh, anyway, I gotta clean up some more stuff. So I'll put the camera back. And let's dry off this tank. And I'll tell you, I'll show you some other little things that I've printed. So this particular one, this was done in Shaper 3D. And you can see just how spindly that is. Like, I think this is a size, oh, I've just got some little sprue support things left. I think this is a size eight, I can't recall. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because it's scalable, right? So if you do it digitally, you can infinitely scale these up or down uh, according to what you need. Um, but anyway, this was made in, in Shaper 3D and then exported. And you can see just how thin, thin these, this, this shank is. It, uh, it managed very well. I think there's a little bit of warpage, but we're talking like a millimeter right at this narrowest point. So I think that's very acceptable. Um, I, I just r roughly put in a stone setting. I'd go back in after this was done in, in silver and I would drill out the stone seat properly with burrs. So anyway, that's one example. Uh, here's another one. This is very, very thin. This one didn't quite come out. It's missing a couple of little layers on the bottom, but we're talking again about a millimeter. So these were just play things really like just to test, but uh, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with how that turned out overall. Bearing in mind that this blue stuff, this is the, the plastic, uh, the tough stuff. So this, these are, are pretty durable, but they're not castable or, or I guess you could, oops. I guess you could cast them, uh, but you're not, it's not recommended because this stuff doesn't burn out cleanly, so you'd end up with ash. Yeah. So when I go to dry these, this base, I'm very, very, very soft. I, I'm doing, I'm covering it with, uh, I'm covering my hand with, uh, with the cloth and all, all four fingertips evenly. And I'm not, I'm not applying any direct pressure. I'm just kind of dragging it lightly. And I'll do that on both sides because I think a little bit of resin got down here and I washed the whole thing. Ideally, what I'll be doing is ordering another tank entirely. Um, another tank, another build platform, which I've set over here. And uh, then I'll be able to do like a hot swap. So when I'm in this situation where I want to do another print right away, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to wait. I can I can start it, get it going, because this next one is actually at ultra detail. So this one's going to take uh, like six hours. The print that you just saw took about two hours and 20 minutes, I think. And uh, we went from there, anyway. So I've been wiping this uh, tank down for a while. It's not actually looking all that great, honestly. Um, I think, I'm gonna to have to change this film shortly. Um, I really don't know. I'll have to do some, go into the printer itself because it's got all this stuff like on timers or it knows how, how much it's printed in its lifetime. So I'll have to make note of, of the time and, uh, and how long this film lasted. Um, replacing the film is relatively simple. You just have to undo all of these screws there's the, this metal part is a frame, and then you, you match it up with the one that Prusa sends, sends you. Uh, you just match it up with all the holes, and, uh, and you tighten it down one at a time slowly. And I think it's like eight bucks for a replacement, so it's very, very manageable. Um, I'll have to tell you how much, how many hours I got out of one of these when I come to that point, but I'll do that as a future update, I think. 
All right, well, I think that's about as clean as I'm gonna get it. So let's put that back. So this has been dried and cured. As soon as this stuff is cured, it feels like thin stuff feels brittle, just so you know. Um, in other words, like where there is supports, it will tend to want to break but this material itself is actually really good. So you can see I kind of did a botched job there. Uh, my plan was ultimately to give these a light sanding, I think, um, but if this works out, yeah, I might have to give them a light sanding, but that's okay. It was already the plan anyway. So let's, uh, let's crack open the green stuff. So casting green. I haven't actually opened this yet, so this is gonna be, New. Um, Got to make sure the build platform is clean and not covered in isopropyl alcohol. Also degreased. Uh, I found when I wasn't wearing gloves, and I think I accidentally, maybe, not accidentally. It was, it was ignorance really. I didn't know that it mattered this much. I think I handled the the build platform with bare hands, and there was a little bit of you know skin oils on there, and. Um, and I think that was enough to make a couple of my first models, some of the large ones that I did, uh, they, they broke off or rather like this side was attached and then this side was kind of like hanging off. So that whole half didn't actually, the whole thing failed because of that. But um, yeah, it was just ignorance really. I didn't know that it mattered that much, but it does. So wear gloves. This next print is um, at 0 0.25 millimeter. So this is set to the ultra detail. This is all in the, in the, uh, the Prusa slicer. Uh, I've set it to Prusa green casting material, which will be next into the tank. And then you can see I basically just redid, I'm doing the same uh, tree multiple times. These are chains or these are chain links individually, that they, I bought this model as an STL. And then I, uh, I basically took the STLs in Shaper 3D, created a, a casting tree and attached them all at once. So I believe there's three, six, nine, 12 on each one. So that's 12 times five. That's uh, 45? Six day. Like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. My math's really bad. <laughs> Um, just a, a rough guess. And then you can see in the corners, I've also done two other rings. And these ones I've been working on for a little while. They're, they're actually custom fit to uh, a couple of stones that I've already got. Uh, one of them is a citron and it'll have four citrons on the sides. And then one of them is gonna be for a big amethyst that I pulled out of a, an antique uh, Tiffany's piece. And I'll do four amethysts on the sides of that. So. Anyway, that's that. This is going to be a estimated print time at nine hours. Wow. This is a long print. All right, so there's the print job on the uh, USB. Just gonna stick that in there, get this out of the way. So when it comes to putting the resin into the printer, I like to uh, start start this first before I put this in because it'll tell me when to fill. And then what it'll do is make sure that the bed is level. This will raise up a little bit. Uh, currently it's at a downward angle, which means that resin is going to flow this way. And there's a little mark over here in the tank that tells you uh, how much is in it. So uh, please fill the resin tank to at least 60% can do. So I'm just going to aim for the 70% mark. Oh, this stuff is like clear, weird. There we go. Got a little bit right there. 
So this stuff is like a semi transparent stuff. And we'll close that. Print. So now what happens is the, you can't really see it because of all the glare. The build platform drops, it tests how much is in it. It'll actually tell me if there's too much. Uh, not relative to the print, but if like I overfill past 100%, then it will, it'll say, oh, you have to stop. And I take the syringe, suck a little bit out, put it back into the container, and then it's, uh, it's good to go. But anyway, this is gonna be the first time for this with the green castable resin. So I'll come back in nine hours and 36 minutes, I guess, and we'll uh, see how this looks. Hey guys, so it's the next morning. I've already uh, finished with the print. I've already washed and cured it. And look at that. Isn't that just phenomenal? Look at, look at the level of detail in there. So this is on ultra detail. This is 0 0.025 millimeter layer heights in castable green resin from Prusa. I didn't know that it was a semi-transparent when I first got it. Uh, it don't, they don't have any photos of it, but as soon as I poured it in, I was like, oh, that's gonna look cool. So when this came out of the, the isopropyl tank, the wash station, it was, uh, it was all wet and the, um, it looked like I'd printed emerald or something. Like it just gets shinier than this. It's really, really awesome. So I'm gonna have to cut this apart and everything. It looks like on a couple occasions I've got some supports that kind of crossed, but I don't think anything's crossed so far into a design or anything. I was pretty careful with the slicer because I knew that this was going to be a very valuable print. But anyway, there's the, there's the models. There's a ring. I've already got some stones to set in these uh, bezels and a big one for the top. Same for this one. Very similar design. And then all these chains. So I'm gonna take some beauties for uh, for social media and stuff. Uh, if you haven't followed us already, uh, please do. We're always doing some neat stuff. And uh, I'll be making more videos of, of 3D printing and other things as well. I do all sorts of weird stuff. So thanks for watching and uh, watch out for the next video.